What is up guys? I'm Josh and welcome back to my channel, Kits Custom Kicks. Today's episode will be a much awaited personal custom. So if you'd like to see a glow in the dark custom on these, then let's get into it. Okay guys, so today's video is gonna be a little bit different than what they normally are. There's obviously gonna be a voiceover and I will explain what I'm doing throughout the process. So after removing the laces, we'll also remove the insole. The first step of any custom where a restoration is involved is cleaning the sneakers. To do this, I use Rejuvenator Advanced Cleaning Solution and I also use the Rejuvenator All-Purpose Brush. As Vic always says, use two squirts, but I like to make it three. And you'll want to scrub vigorously in a circular motion. Which you will not see me do because I do not lead by example. FYI, I bought these shoes off of Poshmark, used and I believe they were around $5. This is the first restoration that I've ever done without gloves, simply for the fact because of COVID I can no longer find them in any local shop, and damn do I wish I had them. I mean seriously guys, this guy should be ashamed of himself. I mean, these things were right. Okay, so getting back into it, you want to make sure to use a shoe tree to enforce the structural integrity of the shoe. Now let's take these to the wash. To begin the custom, we're going to take some acetone and cotton balls and hit the midsole of the shoe. This will remove the factory finish and give us a clean surface for our dye to adhere to. For this custom, we will be using Angela's black leather dye. I urge you to use the applicator that comes with the dye. If you're laying it down with a paintbrush, just try it out. You'll thank me later. We'll actually be painting over this dye later, but the dye is a little bit more permanent than paint. When the paint begins to chip, and let's face it guys, on a midsole it's going to chip, the dye will remain showing fewer flaws. Here I'm using the leather dye on the rest of the shoe as well. Once again, look how simple it is with the applicator. How do you guys feel about the voiceover throughout the custom? Do you like this way or the old way better? If you're new to the channel, you can check out the old way in the video that appears in the top right hand corner of the screen now. And then let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Here I'm hitting the inside liner as well. Next I take Black Angelus paint and Angelus Dullard, mix them together and go over every area we previously dyed. The more Angelus Dull you add to your paint, the chalkier the finish will become. I myself like a chalky finish, so I mix two parts paint to one part duller. For added longevity, I also add Angelus Too Hard to the same mixture and apply one coat. This should be applied to the midsole only. And just a quick tip, if you're not using angle head paint brushes, then stop what you're doing, go on Amazon and buy some ASAP. I'll leave a link in the description of the ones that I'm currently using. Your customizing skills are now 10 times better, you can thank me later. If you're still mastering your craft, which we all are, then you need the best tools to do the best work.
Next, to prep the shoe to receive the glow in the dark paint, we'll lay down a layer of Angelus white paint. Now for the fun part, we'll use Angelus neutral paint and Kids Custom Kicks Glow in the Dark Pigment Powder. Next, I add the two together and apply vigorously to the Nike or Nike Check. And that's something crazy that I found out after starting my YouTube channel. Here in the US, we call it Nike. Everywhere else in the world, they call it Nike. Don't be afraid to be heavy handed with the glow in the dark paint. We'll once again add the Angelus neutral paint with Kids Custom Kicks Glow in the Dark Pigment Powder. So there's actually directions on the amount of pigment to paint that should be used, but I just eyeball it. Look in that pack there, that is customizing gold. We'll apply the pink glow paint to the remaining areas that were previously primed with white paint. Once again, when working with glow in the dark paint, do not worry about being heavy handed. Doing this will actually produce better results in the greater scheme of things. So somehow I completely misplaced the masking tape that I normally use. So I guess sometimes you eat the bar and sometimes the bar eats you. This will not be a true KCK custom without the infamous paint splatter. Not too bad if I do say so myself. Next, we'll go ahead and drop those laces back on and give it a little spin. And this is where the magic happens. One, two, three. All right guys, as you can see, these turned out super legit. So you can see, here's the before. And then once again, the after. If you'd like to purchase your very own glow in the dark pigment powder, check out my website, kitscustomkicks.com. Thanks for checking out the channel. And as always, I appreciate the continued support.